So, Israel had an election the other day, and their parliament came back looking like this. As you can see, Israel is a country with a ton of political parties, and this is something they are very proud of. I was in Israel a couple of weeks ago, and check out this graphic they had at the top of their Israel Decides 2019 election coverage. That's 14 different party leaders, all theoretically running for prime minister. Israel has so many political parties because they use an interesting electoral system in which your ability to to win seats in the parliament is entirely based on what percentage of the popular vote you get. If you can win just over 3% of the popular vote, you will get at least three seats in the national parliament, even if your support is scattered in little bits all over the country. Political scientists sometimes call this a proportional representation system. This is of course very different from how politics works in America, where seats in Congress are won in hundreds of different geographic races. Hundreds of candidates run in 435 different districts, 535 if we include the Senate, with winners being the person who wins the plurality of the popular vote in that specific geographic zone. Anyway, because of the way the Israeli electoral system works, it is possible to have successful political parties based around very narrow interest groups. So in addition to lots of different parties offering different flavors of right and left-wing philosophy, ultra-Orthodox Jews have special ultra-Orthodox Jewish parties, you know, the Arabs have Arab parties, even the Russian immigrants have a special Russian immigrant party. Since it is not terribly difficult to win seats in the Israeli parliament, there is a lot of incentive for small communities to form their own political parties and get their foot in the door that way. I mean, obviously they will quickly hit a rather low ceiling of support. Most of these people could never ever dream of winning a majority of seats in the parliament because their appeal is way too narrow, but they would argue it is still ultimately worth it if that means that they get a few very pure representatives of their community into the government. So I was thinking, what would it be like if America had the Israeli electoral system? Imagine if over the last hundred years or so, all it took to get at least three members of Congress elected was for at least 3% of the American public to vote for your party? What would American politics look like if that was the case? There would obviously be tons of different political parties and the Congress would look less like this and more like this. So let's talk about a theoretical multi-party America, what that would look like and how it would affect the government, particularly the presidency. The presidency would get really strange under a multi-party system, as we shall see. So for starters, if America had a multi-party system, would the Republicans and the Democrats still exist? I would say yes, but they would be a lot smaller. In most Western countries, regardless of how many political parties they have, the two dominant parties always tend to be one of the broad center-right and one of the broad center-left. This just seems to be a rather inescapable part of how Western political philosophy manifests in democratic countries. In multi-party America, the Republicans and Democrats would fulfill this role. They would be two large centrist parties appealing mostly to the white American middle class. They wouldn't be that much different from how they are now, just a bit more moderate. The Dems would probably be led by a Joe Biden type and the Republicans by a Jeb Bush type. Basically the party establishments and nothing more. And the reason why they would have nothing more is because in a multi-party system, the more ideological factions of both parties would have split off and formed their own parties. There would probably be some sort of American Socialist Party, for instance. It would have been set up in the early 20th century by some American Socialist politician like Eugene Debs and become an entrenched part of the American party system ever since. They probably wouldn't be that popular, but you could imagine them having some support in like the big cities or parts of the country where organized labor is very strong. And then there would probably be a left-wing African-American interest party. This would be a special party set up by and for black Americans. We could imagine a party like this being set up in the early 20th century too, at a time when things like the NAACP were being founded. Now, to some extent, you could argue that this party already exists today in the form of the Congressional Black Caucus. The US Civil Rights Act guarantees majority minority districts in Congress and as a result, in modern times at least, African Americans have not had a lot of difficulty electing representatives of their community to Congress. But because the current political system is geography-based, the majority of members of the Congressional Black Caucus 
tend to either come from the south or big urban centers, places where the African-American community is very concentrated. It is interesting to imagine what an African-American political party would be like if black communities elsewhere in the country had greater sway over it. Right now, all members of the Congressional Black Caucus are Democrats, which suggests that the African-American community is quite liberal. But I know that there are a lot of black conservatives who say that this is a bit of a myth, and that African-Americans would be a lot more conservative if they didn't have to do all of their politics through the Democrat Party. So it is interesting to wonder if a separate black party would be to the left or the right of the mainstream Democrats. There would probably also be a party for Latino interests. Latino Americans would probably benefit even more from a proportional representation electoral system, just because they tend to be distributed a little bit more evenly across America than blacks, which is probably why there are fewer Latinos than African-Americans in Congress, even though Latinos actually comprise a greater share of the national population. You could imagine a Latino party being very centered around immigration issues and like workers' rights and probably rights for Spanish speakers as well. You could imagine a party like this seeming very strange and exotic to white America as well. They would presumably do a lot of their campaigning in Spanish and through Spanish language media, meaning English speaking Americans would not really have any clue what they were up to. I had been wondering if it would be possible to create an explicitly illegal immigrant party in America. That's the sort of party you could imagine existing in other countries. Just because it's a very visible community with a very clear agenda, the numbers might be there to get such a party over the 3% threshold. But of course, it would face a significant roadblock in the form of the fact that illegal immigrants cannot vote or serve in Congress. All right, so those would basically be the parties of the left, but the American right would be all split up under a multi-party system too. You'd almost certainly have a further right explicitly Christian party, for instance. It would basically just be a party for people preoccupied with a certain religiously inspired political agenda, like opposing abortion, or restricting the expansion of LGBT rights. They'd probably also have lots of demands for special exemptions for Christians to opt out of following laws that they morally disagree with. And then they'd want lots of federal subsidies for Christian schools and things. Right now, a lot of these people are obviously inside of the Republican Party, but the Republicans are officially a secular party. An explicitly Christianist party would be a lot more comfortable going after the very idea of separation of church and state. Their official party platform would probably be in favor of things like officially declaring America to be a Christian country. A party like this almost certainly would be led by evangelical Protestants and probably would have been founded during the big evangelical revival of the late 1970s. But since it would not have to rely on a geographic base, it would probably be a lot less Southern than we think of Christian politics today. It is interesting to wonder if this party would also include conservative Catholics and Mormons. Because the majority of American Mormons live in Utah, they tend to exercise a lot of political power through that state. Utah Mormons basically even had their own presidential candidate in 2016. But if America had a non-geographic based political system, the Mormons would probably not have as much influence because there's just not that many of them in America as a whole. There are six million Mormons in America, meaning that even if every Mormon man, woman, and child voted for a Mormon party, it would still not be enough to clear our 3% threshold. I could imagine there possibly being a small party for conservative American Catholics, however. Just because Catholics are a larger demographic group, and conservative Catholics have tended to have their own political parties in other countries. An American Catholic party would probably be very anti-abortion, but perhaps more moderate on some of the other issues. But you could also imagine such a party sort of teetering on the brink of irrelevancy as more and more conservative Catholics would just vote for the evangelical party if they cared a lot about the abortion issue and one of the other parties if they didn't. Independent of religion, there would probably be a really hardcore far-right party too. It would be secular, but with really extreme views on like guns and immigration and the Federal Reserve and stuff like that. Basically, it would be a party for the far right conspiracy theory set who are presently too scattered all across the country to be able to vote one of their own into power. It would almost certainly be a sort of borderline white nationalist party and not be very popular. It would be extremely controversial and all of the other parties would be expected to denounce it. In a multi-party system circa 2019, America would almost certainly have at least one new trendy centrist party as well. This always seems to happen in multi-party systems. 
voters sort of get spoiled and keep demanding more and more choices, even as they already have a pretty diverse menu of options. So you can imagine a trendy businessman like Howard Schultz or Michael Bloomberg coming along and creating a new party that purports to be some, you know, bold, fresh, new choice. It would appeal mostly to the educated upper middle class in America's big cities and suburbs. The sort of people who think that they transcend all partisan labels and just want, you know, competent, smart, secular people running the government. This kind of party wouldn't be that popular, but you could imagine it clearing the 3%. International precedent suggests that the United States Green Party would probably also be a bit more successful under a multi-party system. If climate change continues to rise as a big issue, you could imagine a party exclusively devoted to this issue being able to scrape up at least 3%. They'd probably be right on the brink, however, because the mainstream Democrats, the socialists, and like the nouveau technocrat party would probably all be pretty into fighting climate change too. So just to summarize, this would be the new American multi-party system. And here's some random guesses of just how much of the popular vote they would get in the year 2020. Now, how would this affect American politics in real terms? Well, the first thing is that the Congress would be super divided. To pass any legislation at all, the parties would have to form voting coalitions with one another. In most cases, this would mean either the Democrats or the Republicans forming coalitions with the small parties of the right or left in order to cobble together a majority. The first test of any coalition would be its ability to elect a speaker, or in the case of the Senate, a majority leader. These people would probably become even more like little prime ministers than they are now. If the coalitions in Congress broke down, they would boot out the speaker or majority leader and try to elect someone new. You could imagine this being the source of a lot of media drama. But the most interesting thing to imagine is how presidential elections would work under a multi-party system. The US president is of course elected by the electoral college. And right now there is always a lot of controversy about how it is possible for the electoral college to elect a president who did not win a majority of the popular vote. Like like Trump and Bush and Clinton. But in a multi-party system, presidents would get elected without a majority of the popular vote every time. In fact, they would usually be elected by Congress and not even the Electoral College at all. See, the Electoral College awards electoral votes based on who can win the largest share of the vote in each individual state, and it is easy to win a majority of electoral votes in a two-party system. But in a strong multi-party system, no one would ever be able to win a majority of votes in the Electoral College just because vote splitting would allow some of the smaller parties to win at least a couple of states. Now, the 12th Amendment says that when no one wins a majority of votes in the Electoral College, Congress has to pick one of the top three candidates to be president. They do this using a complicated system of one vote per state delegation. So you can imagine what a headache this would be if the Congress making that decision was all split up among a bunch of different parties. I mean, imagine this Congress trying to elect a president. It's hard enough to imagine the current Congress electing a president. There would be so much negotiation and deal making and whoever wound up getting elected president would owe a lot of complicated favors to a lot of different interest groups, just like Netanyahu does in Israel. But anyway, I want to hear what you have to say in response to this little thought exercise. Can you think of any other groups in American society who would probably have their own political parties under a proportional representation system? And what do you think government would be like? Overall, would it be better or worse? I look forward to reading your comments and I will see you all next week.